Ladies and gentlemen, he's very nervous. Would you please give him a massive, massive seminar round of applause for Mr. Doug Lennon! Right, as Gordon said, I'm extremely nervous to be talking in front of so many people. It's not something I feel comfortable doing. It's only my second time ever doing it, so bear with me if I feck it up. I don't think I'm allowed to curse, but... Um, so, for me, it all started with that video, or I suppose ended with that video that I posted on the 3rd of April 2016, where for the first time ever, I spoke about my mental health. I spoke about the dark times I went through. I spoke about the anxiety attacks I was having. But what I haven't spoken about really is how I got to that point, why I released the video. So for me, it started back when I was in school, like a lot of you guys out there, and maybe one person in this room will be able to relate to what I went through. So I was 14, and I didn't like the way I looked, how I felt. I was a little bit overweight, and I didn't feel like I fitted in. I was worried about meeting girls or getting on the rugby team. So I decided to do something about it, and to be honest with you, it wasn't the best solution. I developed an eating disorder, so every time I ate, I threw it back up again. Then I'd eat, and I'd throw it back up again. And I did this for about eight or nine months until my mum confronted me. And she asked me, what was I doing what she thought I was doing? And I broke down in tears, and I said, yeah, I am because I'm not happy with who I am or how I look. And I was fortunate enough to come from a great family that were able to afford to send me to doctors and personal trainers and nutritionists. But it ultimately led me to St. John of God's in Silorgan, where I was diagnosed with this thing called depression. And I say this thing because at the age of 15, I had no idea what the word depression was, what it meant, what it stood for. I had no idea about mental health. It wasn't something I was taught about in school. And I didn't have great events to go to, like seminar. Now, I know for a lot of you, it's a great day off school, but for a lot of people, this could be really beneficial. So I didn't feel like I could walk into school the next day and tell my best friend that oh, I'd just been diagnosed with depression. It wasn't like breaking your arm where you walk in and everybody runs over to ask you how you are, what happened, and can I sign your cast? You kind of feel that if you walked in and said you're suffering with depression, people would turn their, their backs on you and walk away. And that was when I was growing up, that was 12 years ago, and I'm hoping that it's changed a little bit now, and the people here are gonna change that. So we fast forward a couple of years, and I'm going through some really dark days. I didn't want to wake up. I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to hang around with my friends. And for me, I described depression like this dark cloud that followed you around. On a good day, the dark cloud was there to remind you, do you know what, mate? You're not having a good day. Tomorrow's going to be shit. I'm going to be here. I'm going to remind you that you're not happy within yourself. And I'm going to remind you that you don't want to be here anymore. And then on a bad day, that dark cloud got bigger and bigger and darker and darker and ultimately just poured all over me to a point where I didn't want to live anymore, to a point where Sorry. To a point where I wanted to take my life. I thought that was an easy way out. I thought that was the solution. I thought that would help my parents. I thought that would help my sister. And I thought that would help me. And that's scary. It's scary when you think that taking your life is the right answer. And I can tell you now it's not. But at the time, I can see why so many people in Ireland do it because there's very few people talking about mental health and you do feel alone. After school finished for me, I went into college where it lasted about three months, dropped out. Um, probably because of everything I was going through, slash didn't want to be there. And I started working for myself. So my dark days became less and less frequent, but I'd have dark spells. So maybe every six weeks I would have bottled everything up and I would have had a really bad spell for about two weeks where I didn't want to live anymore. I wanted to take my life. I needed to go to doctors, I needed to get my, my medication upped or continue it or go continue uh, to doctor's sessions. And that was really tough as well for about three or four years, knowing that you're still not okay, that you still might end your life at any given point. And fast forward a couple of years then, I got diagnosed with this thing called Crohn's disease. And a lot of people don't know what Crohn's is, and it's an informational bowel disease, it affects the inside of my stomach, and it's something I live with every single day. So standing up here, none of you would have known that I have Crohn's when I walk out here because it's an invisible disease, exactly like depression. But the difference for me with Crohn's and dep depression was I wanted to let, grab Crohn's by the horns and, and conquer it. I didn't want to end up losing a good bit of my, in, uh, my intestines or having a bag or being run down and not having energy. I wanted to tackle it head on. 
and I talked about my Crohn's to my friends. I opened up, even though having Crohn's is kind of disgusting. Like, you're infrequent toilet movements. You don't know when you're gonna need to go to the toilet. Sometimes you go to the toilet and it's actually just blood. It is horrible, not like depression. Depression, you don't have those side effects. But I didn't feel comfortable talking about depression. So I talked about my Crohn's and I started to handle, get a handle on it. And I felt much better. And then a couple of months later, life threw another hurdle at me. And I was rear-ended by a 24-foot truck. That was one of probably the worst days of my life. I was at a roundabout, a truck comes in behind me and throws me in front of the oncoming cars in the roundabout. I clenched every bone in my body and I jumped to the side hoping that I wouldn't die. I don't know what happened after this, but somehow my mum and dad were in the hospital. I kind of came around to my senses. I think the, the adrenaline had kept me going. I remember going home that night and writing a diary in my laptop and saying, for the first time ever, I was happy to be alive. And for me, that was a moment in my life where I knew I had to do something about my mental health. I actually had to start talking about it. And I went to see a doctor called Dr. Ian Gargan. And Ian and I made out a plan, and it was a three-step plan. The first was to admit that I had depression. And that sounds a bit weird. I've been suffering for this for about 10 years. Surely I would have admitted it by now, but I wouldn't. Typical Irish fashion, I always said to myself, I'll be Grant. It's not real. It's just whatever I'm going through. It's puberty or whatever. Now, puberty at 25 is a bit unusual. But uh, it was, it, that was, for me, a hard thing to do growing up. But at the age of 25, 26, I was happy to admit it. I knew my illness didn't define me. I knew I wasn't my illness, that I was still the same person I wanted to be and that everybody else would still see that. So I admitted to having depression. I took my tablets, even though my mum down there somewhere will tell you that I didn't. Um, but I did. I ultimately ended up taking them for a good period of my life. The second step was to open up and talk to one or two friends. And I did that in Dublin and Galway, where I live part time. And for me, that was an amazing feeling. To open up and to talk to someone was incredible. It made me feel comfortable around them and it made me feel like I was Doug Ledden, not Doug living this other life to everybody else. And the third step was to open up to all my friends in the WhatsApp group, the lads. The lads that slag you day in, day out, because that's what friends do, especially guys. And that was for me the hardest challenge of this kind of journey that I was on. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, when I was gonna do it, or if I was ever gonna do it at all, to be honest. But then in March, I was at a friend's funeral of her brother, sorry, my friend's brother's funeral, and he took his life. And we're all standing outside the church. And a lot of people were coming up to us in the circles that we were in saying, isn't that awful? If we knew what that guy was going through, maybe we could have helped him. Maybe this, we wouldn't be here today. Or if we knew what everybody was going through, maybe we could prevent this in the future. Maybe we could actually put Pieta House out of business because they don't, we don't need them anymore. And that is ultimately Pieta House's goal, that we don't need to, to have somewhere to go to because we can talk and we can be open and we can get, seek help. I drove home to Galway at the afternoon after agreeing with everybody, yeah, it would be great if we all talked about it. And I started crying on my way home to Galway knowing I am part of this problem. I am part of a problem in Ireland where people suffer in silence and that's not okay. I wasn't the cause of the problem, but I wasn't helping it. So I got, got to Galway that afternoon and I sent a message to my friend who's a videographer and I asked him to record that video. I didn't know if I was ever going to put it up. I didn't know why I was going to put it up or, or even why I was going to put it up through Facebook. I just thought it would be easier to tell everybody in one foul swoop what I was going through for so many years. So on the 3rd of April, I posted a video. And my life hasn't changed. I haven't cured myself. A video or a Facebook status or a message in the WhatsApp group isn't going to cure you from depression or mental health challenges that you're going through. But it will help. It will make you feel a hell of a lot better knowing that your friends sitting to the left and right of you are there for you. And I suppose what I want to get out of this today is to encourage every single one of you out there to open up, to talk about your feelings. We as a generation need to start opening up so that the future generations in Ireland have a happier place to live in. And that's why it's so important that you guys are the change in Ireland. Thank you.